Praise the Lord. We are back on for another radio broadcast. We've been talking about demolishing strongholds. Last week, we talked about demolishing complaining, murmuring, and chiding. And this week, we are going to be talking about judgmental, critical spirit. Amen. Amen. So, praise God. <clears throat> yeah, praise God. I really have enjoyed, like I said, every single week, just making sure that we attack each one of these and look at each one of these because it really does help to make God's people aware of a lot of the different devices of the enemy, a lot of different strongholds that the enemy has on God's people. And he uses these things to uh, just basically bring the work of God to a halt. And, he, you know, sometimes he's coming from the outside, sometimes he's coming from the inside. But I really believe... The one that we're going to talk about today, this judgmentalness, this uh, having this preconceived judgments of people or a critical spirit is all about imploding the work of God from the inside out. It's about getting God's people to be against each other. And I know we've looked at others that have kind of done the same thing, but the, the enemy is just trying to figure out any way that he can to stop the work of God. So if he can't get it from the outside in, then he's going to work from the inside out. And I think that, man, you start to get God's people where they begin to judge each other and they begin to be critical one of another or they begin to have preconceived ideas one another. And we could kind of even go into the realms of making assumptions, like, you know, yeah. because you thought you knew the facts, or maybe you had a couple, a little bit of conjecture, but you didn't have the whole story. And so you just went ahead, or maybe everybody else had the same judgment on this individual. So because they did, you went with the crowd. And I don't care when you go with the crowd, a lot of times you're not going in the right direction, even in the church, you know what I mean? Because there's a church crowd too. And so just, I think this is an area that the enemy uses quite a bit. And I think it's really good that we're making God's people aware of it and hopefully this will help us to be able to demolish that stronghold in our own lives or help somebody else demolish it in their life and especially in the life of the church as a whole so yeah praise god you know you said one specific word it said it was assumption right mm -hmm, yeah and so i was looking up the different definitions and you know when you have preconceived judgments on someone you know it basically said an assumption or opinion about someone simply based on that person's membership to a particular group right. or even <laughs> an opinion formed beforehand without even adequate evidence or information, right? And judgmental, like I looked that up and it said disapproving or tending to judge people too quickly and critically, look for or point out faults, basically fault finding, <laughs> like just right. looking for the faults mm -hmm. in the sin yeah. in other people. You know, it's important that we talk about this because the Lord's definitely convicted me of it and I know I'm not the only one, amen. <laughs> right, no, <laughs> There's absolutely. other people in the body yeah. of Christ yeah. that struggle with it as well. So <clears throat> I'm happy that we were talking about it. Praise God. I'm just thinking about how you just said, you know, you have dealt with it and you know other people in the body of Christ are dealing with it too. But you know what I'm thinking is maybe they don't even know. You know, because a lot of times Satan has so many devices. He's yeah. so subtle. Right. And so that, you know, part of what we're doing with identifying strongholds, it's like bringing a magnifying glass to all these different things so we can take a closer look and examination of ourselves. And I kind of, I think that's, you know, wise yeah. in general because we're seeing like, wow, never really considered this or, mm -hmm. or how yeah. much he uses these devices, these strongholds or how yeah. many there are and how, mm -hmm. you know, given we can be to them at times. And so yeah. just, you know, something in general that I was thinking about. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. And, you know, and just thinking about how big, because like, you know, uh, a lot, one side of the church might say, oh, well, you're not a Christian if you belong to this party. And the other one would say, oh, well, you're not a Christian if you don't belong mm -hmm. to this party or uh, they allow politics to influence their judgmentalness or their criticalness or yeah. or then you, there's the denominational thing right it's like oh you well we're, we're uh, we know that you're christian but you know we're the best christians because we're the only ones that believe right or vice versa and you know and 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 and, and again you're, you're being a lot like the enemy because the enemy is a very very critical you know i mean that's yeah. what he does he criticizes he's the accuser of the brethren and you know he's also also the father of of lies and so of course assumptions are nothing more than you you know you're not believing facts there's no facts when you're assuming something you're just you know whatever it is you're just gonna like you said have a formed opinion but an opinion yeah. is not a fact as a matter of fact you know the an opinion is nothing but your but your mindset on a specific thing you know the facts mm -hmm. are the facts an opinion is something that is made up and and all those things dealing with the uh, you know assumption and that critical spirit and yeah. so I think that God's people are, are very, very prone to get caught up in whatever crowd they're in. You know what I mean? And that's one. And, and I think if you ask me, okay, so what, what device has the devil used to keep God's people apart? I would say this is probably a pretty good one yeah. when it comes to keeping the church from being united and actually doing a work for God. And, you know, we know what Jesus said about that, that a house is divided cannot stand, yeah. right? And we see so little getting accomplished by the church in our day, there's so much division, and I think it's because 
the enemy uses things like critical spirit or uses things like judgmentalness to keep us at, at odds one with another. And if you're at odds one with another, you're never going to get together on anything. So Yeah, yeah definitely. I, I agree. You're not going to want to work together. But And I'm going to, like, I hear you talking a lot about how he's using it to keep God's people divided. Mm -hmm. What God gave me illustration-wise is actually outside of the church. So I'm, I'm looking forward to even bringing that up. But, you know, what I think we notice a lot is people bring their old mindset mm -hmm. when, with them when they get right, saved. Yeah. And so they think that it's, you know, what they think is right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So what I believed before, I can bring in and, and mix that together with grace. And that's just not true. It's so presumptuous in general to think that I can find faults in everyone else and that I don't have my own. Yeah. Right, yeah. You know what I mean? Like how yeah. <clears throat> critical, how judgmental, how presumptuous and wrong and uh, preconceived, yeah. you know, to think that, well, I can look at everyone else and see their problems and their yeah. faults, but not my own. Like, right, yeah. like that's, that's pretty wicked considering Jesus died for sins. <laughs> yeah. 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 All of them. Yes. Praise God. And you know what? Having a critical spirit, like it does not reflect God's heart at all. No. <laughs> and no. you know, as God's people, we ought to desire to have, you know, a heart after God. Right. right? Yeah. You know, I think of David, how he was a man after God's own heart. And yeah. I, I definitely want to have that. And I know you all do, too. Right. Yeah. And so having the critical spirit is definitely mm -hmm. not reflecting God's heart. So. <laughs> yeah. and, 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 and interestingly enough, too, like we talk about, OK, what this does inside the church. But you're right. The enemy can use this outside the church, too, because, I mean, man, we yeah. can look at everybody and be like, oh, Oh, they're all sinners. They're all sinners. Oh, they're all sinners. But wait a minute. The whole church is filled with sinners that are either. The only difference is you're saved. And, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, maybe you're not sinning as bad as you used to. Or maybe you're not. But but all of us you know, have that sin nature. Right. And so and so, you know, we, I can see where it can go every different ways. I just, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, the enemy's going to take any angle he can. He's going to try to use it in any way that he can. But mm -hmm. I yeah. can see where that would work as well. I know we're going to give some biblical examples. We've actually had quite a bit of an intro on this yeah. one, so it's actually kind of uh, come out there and we kind of laid it all out. Now that we know the different ways and different forms that it can come in, let's look at some of those biblical examples and see what we got of somebody that was struggling with judgmentalness or a critical spirit and, and, and how that worked out. Considering that, you know, being critical <clears throat> and judgmental and have preconceived judgments are a huge stronghold in the church i would say that because simply what it does is it keeps god's people it can keep us it can keep them it can keep all of the church from going out and winning the lost yeah. right. winning souls yeah. to yeah. jesus Good. christ and so the example that god gave me is out of romans and i'm simply picking the jews that were of the church of rome right okay and you know and just starting and i'm going to be really quick with it but i'm going to hit a couple chapters you know starting in romans 1 you know paul had never gone to rome yet he was just writing them he had given them an intro he had given them a nice greeting he had given them encouraging words he had told them literal judgments of God. God is against these things. God doesn't like these things, you know, and then all in chapter one. And then we get to chapter two and he warns them. OK, he warns them. It says, therefore, thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judges. For wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest doest the same things. Yeah. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Or despiseth thou the riches of his goodness, and forbearance, and longsuffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? He completely, after he gave them that whole greeting, that whole intro, he went through all the things that were wrong, right? According to God, yeah. not according to man. And then he told them, hey, I'm warning you of your sinful nature, you know, mm -hmm. yours of what are you doing? Are you doing these same, same things? Because we're all sinful, right. you know, and you skip, go skip a few more chapters, you know, in chapter six through eight, he says, hey, we're to stop living in sin. We're to stop being instruments of sin. He right. just goes on, yeah, you know, yeah. with more and more. And he says, look, you know what? There is there now. There is now no condemnation unto them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Right, yeah. And, you know, and that's, I think, the big key, you know, um, he said, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. 
if it so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. And then he goes on to say, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. You know, yeah. he tells us, and this goes back to my original thought, my original thought where he says, you know, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And what happens a lot of times is we bring in our old thinking, right? And we come at, you know, like why I'm not going to, be careful with this person why i'm not going to witness to this right, person yeah, within yeah. the church i got to thinking about yeah. sometimes they'll be biased or prejudiced against genders yeah. like sometimes men value women less you know yeah, just sure. because of the culture back then and i think you, you know sometimes they're not getting to do the things that god is wanting them to do because men are like no absolutely not we won't allow it right. when god said we're all one in christ jesus right, right yeah. and sometimes mm -hmm. you have them you know we see it here in the south a lot they're judging according to race yeah. you know, we hear all the time there's white churches black churches hispanic churches and you know what Take a look at Revelation. It says that we're going to have every nation under heaven there. Yeah. Right? Yeah, right, There's yeah. no you know, specific color of church. God wants all races there. you know. And then what about, and that's just talking about people in the church. What about social classes? You know, our church is filled with you know, people who've come out of a rough background. Uh, I'm just going to say he's not out there just looking for, he's looking for anyone and everyone. Obviously. Right, yeah, exactly. But he's not just calling the Joel Olsteins and the Creflo Dollars. He says go into the highways and the byways and compel yeah. them. He's yeah. like, I want all of them. It doesn't matter. You know, and then thinking about those outside of the church. You know what? So maybe they do worship a false god. But you know what? The Bible says that they worship the unknown god. And what did Paul do? He went and told him who that was. And so just because someone's associated with a different religious affiliation doesn't mean that we can't love them and show them the love of Christ and try to win them to the Lord. Yeah. And then a big thing in our day is... is looking down on people for their sexual orientation mm -hmm. or you know the yeah, the, the right, transgender right. stuff right now you know what that is not their biggest sin <laughs> they're on their way to hell and yeah. we just want to many in the church want to avoid them all together simply because you know they want to deem this sin big, sin bigger or greater than the next but you know god died for all and yes, so yeah. we have got to let go of our mind and be spiritually minded because otherwise we'll be carnally minded which is death spiritually minded which is obviously going to see people saved praise the lord amen but uh just giving my biblical example amen i'm going to go ahead and talk about the pharisees because obviously you know they were very judgmental they were very critical of everything that they saw to the point where even when God or Jesus, God, they're one and the same, mm -hmm. amen, would do a miracle, they'd criticize them for it. They'd criticize right. the person that got the miracle done. I mean, instead of them mm -hmm. getting excited, I mean, you would think that, man, somebody gets a hand that was withered and gets stretched out and, you know, his hand's made whole and like the other one, you'd think they'd be excited. Oh, man, this guy got his hand. Nuh-uh. They're upset. They're mad. They're mad. You did that on the Sabbath. You did. You made that guy back. You, that woman, I can't believe you healed her on the Sabbath. I mean, it's like and all they can do is criticize uh, what Jesus was doing over and over and over again. And instead of being excited that somebody was getting a miracle in your life. And that's one thing about a critical spirit. You get a critical spirit, man. You get you get, you get under the power of that. And the enemy gets that in your life with that judgmental spirit. And you can't be happy for nobody. Yeah. If somebody's getting blessings, the uh, Lord's working something out, God's answers and prayers. And you're over there like... Man, you know, you're just criticizing them. You're looking for things to be yeah. upset with them. It's like, I can't believe that guy's getting blessings from God. I'm upset. You know what I mean? And I've, been, I've really been around believers that are upset when other believers yeah. are getting blessed or whatever it is. You know, it's crazy. But hey, that's what happens. It's what the devil will do to people. Even. Yeah. But I'm going to go ahead and give us the example. And as Jesus passed forth from thence, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the receipt of custom. And he saith unto him, Follow me. And he arose and followed him. And it came to pass, as Jesus said at me in the household, Behold, many publicans... And sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, Why eateth your master with publicans and sinners? But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, They that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice, for I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And so right there they began to criticize Jesus because Jesus came to save sinners. Yeah. Jesus came to save those in need of a Savior. Jesus came to save, you know, it's a lot like what you were saying earlier with the people that maybe, you know, everybody's like, oh, well, they, you know, you know, they worship this false god. or they. I mean, we're supposed to go, everybody worshiped a false god before Jesus, you know, I mean, uh, obviously besides maybe the Jews, but the whole point is this, is that, you know, if you're going to spend all this time criticizing them or criticizing each other, then you're never going to be doing what God called you to do. So, I mean, I want to look at it from two different aspects as well. And then 
Then there's the criticism inside the church that we see where, where, where people will begin to criticize one another and tear apart one another. And that's exactly the opposite of what Paul said. Many times Paul would come into a church and he would say, there's some problems between this brother and this brother. And I need you guys to stop being going, going at each other. And I need you to start uh, coming together and being, uh, being of one body and being of one faith, being of one baptism. I mean, he said that all that in Ephesians. He said it in Philippians. He said, if there's any consolation, if there be any comfort of love, if there be any, any fellowship in the spirit, any joy, he said, I would that you be of the same mind one toward another that you, you know, that you, and, and so, and he says it over and over about being yeah. of that one minus, right? In, in, in Corinthians, he was talking to them about, about how one of them was saying, well, I'm a Paul, and in other words, I'm a Paul. So basically, they're criticizing. So they, you got baptized by Paul. <laughs> I got baptized by Apollos. You, know I mean? yeah. you got baptized by Apollos. Ah, it was Peter that baptized me. And Paul's like, was, was Peter crucified for you? Was Paul yeah. crucified for you? And, and so that critical spirit, we can, we can, and we can almost criticize anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. If we get under that spirit, we can judge anything. And you get a point like, you know, uh, you, you're wearing wire rim glasses. Uh, you know, or you, or you, you, you didn't wear, wear you, didn't, you didn't wear a white suit. Uh, I can't believe you walked there with a white suit. But what if they don't own a white suit? Is it your beard shade? I mean, your whatever. I'm saying, obviously, it, this thing can go all over the place, yeah. right? And so we can't take up forever. But I'm just saying that it can be inside, it can be outside. But it's a very bad spirit to become to get under. So yeah, thanks y'all for sharing. And I just want to say, like, man, the main goal that we're here is first of all to glorify God, but to win the loss. Right. right? Yeah, yeah. And when we're judgmental and we're critical, man, it makes the loss not want to come to Jesus. That's right. You know? exactly, and we yeah. ought to reflect Jesus Christ, <clears throat> mm-hmm. and He has a caring, compassionate spirit mm-hmm. rather than a critical spirit. So yeah, absolutely. We got to get back to the purpose. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Praise God. And, and and that's one of the things like I lo- I love that my wife brought it out about how you know yeah we live in a society that's very sexually orientated in ways that you know a lot of societies aren't and you can't sit there and you know you're you're not gonna you're never gonna fix the problem by being hateful by being rude by being critical by being judgmental the only thing that's gonna ever lead them to Jesus is love yeah. okay and Jesus yeah. loves everybody I don't care what it is you, you, you never you're not gonna ever convince me that Jesus doesn't love somebody say well oh but they're reprobate no you don't know when they're you don't know when God drew the line you're not God yeah. our job our only job is ambassador and is an ambassador is is there to produce the terms of peace the, the treaty and then you let God change them you let the spirit change them you let the word of God change them now that doesn't mean yeah. you compromise on preaching the word of God that doesn't mean that you compromise on um, what what sin is, but you're not to you're not to be critical and judgmental of them. So yeah. I know we don't got a lot of time to hit that, but I mean I think it's very important we yeah. understand. Listen, we live. This is our America. Yeah. That's our harvest field. You do yeah. not want to s- s- cut the harvest field down yourself and burn it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Th- that's not our job. Our job is to help yeah. them to get to heaven. They are so. going to get judged. Yeah, they're going to get judged. But God is the judge, and I think right. that is. So it's not yeah. our job. I mean, we're not any good at judging anyway. Yeah, <laughs> amen. And not only that, but like the redeem the time came to mind mm-hmm. because we're literally wasting time when we're like judging the lost. <laughs> yeah. Right? Because we're we're called to go reach the lost. Right, yeah. <laughs> And yet we're judging them, and yeah. we're literally wasting the time that God has entrusted to us. It's so important that we demolish this stronghold in the church. So. And then yeah. when you're judging everybody, in the church, you're not even out there worried about yeah. the law. Let's just exactly. be honest. You're not doing what And then it goes back to what yeah. you said, Sam. You're not drawing them to God. You're driving yeah. them away from God. They're like, yeah. uh-uh. you Because no, cause nobody wants to be criticized. Nobody yeah. wants to be judged. You know I mean? And, and you know, sometimes... I mean, we're just here, so praise, yeah, God. praise God. Sometimes they walk in the church, and the moment they yes. walk in the church, the eyes of judgment yes. and the eyes of criticalness and the people begin to tighten up and you know what I mean they're like moving over and they're like you know they're watching them the whole time not not running and hugging on them yeah. and loving on them and that's one things I do love about churches where you can come in and, and people are loving on yes. you and hugging on you and they're you know and, and it's like it's like that you know that you're you're amongst family and I, and I think that's the way the church body of Christ should be yes. I can't picture Jesus looking at you just staring you down while you're walking in like <laughs> yeah. oh my goodness look at what they're wearing I mean I, would never. <laughs> I mean so when, when the truth is you know he went to the woman at the well I guarantee you she wasn't the, the most godliest dressed woman yeah. in the in the in the town right mm-hmm. I mean 
and a number of other situations, right? But all I'm saying is that we cannot have that spirit and expect to reach the lost or not expect to cause division in the body of Christ. Because, again, you get that spirit where I'm critical of others. I'm the smartest guy in the room. I got the, it produces yeah. pride. I mean, it's a really – you talk about gateway drugs. This is probably a gateway sin to just about almost every other sin you can have in some degree or another. But anyways, yeah. uh, we need to drop some raw and real truth bombs yeah. on this – this, this, uh, this device of the devil, yes, amen. Praise so God. praise God. You know, first of all, it says, "For uh, the time has come that judgment should begin at the house of the Lord." Right? Amen. And so, number one, we are to look inward. All right, because we're the yeah. temple, we're the house mm -hmm. of God, and so we need to judge ourselves. Mm -hmm. And first, it's look in. Second, it says, "Look to what is right or righteous." Okay, because we are not right, but God is right and righteous, and we know amen. that the Bible says that all the weights of the bag are His. And so, if we think we're going to compare ourselves or be critical to someone, then go ahead and try to do it to Christ, because you're just going to, you know, come short every time so yeah. look inward look to what is right or righteous and then look for cleansing psalm 51 1 through 4 you know david said have mercy upon upon me O god according to thy loving kindness according to the multitude of thy tender mercies blot out my transgression wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin i won't keep going on but we need to look for cleansing also we need to look to be crucified we know galatians 2 20 you know mm -hmm. um crucified mm -hmm. with christ nevertheless and i won't go Amen. we need to be dead to all judgments and all criticalness right all those pre preconceived ideas and then uh lastly is is we need to help others to look to christ you know yes. hebrews 9 28 said so christ was once offered to bear the sins of many and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time unto salvation and Amen. so look inward look to what's right or righteous look for cleansing look to be crucified and help others to look to christ Amen. Yeah, praise praise God. God. i'm on this acrostic thing so i think they make good <laughs> battle strategies so i'm going to go right back to because this is like the counter offensive move right the enemy's yeah. like i want you to be critical i want you to be judgmental i want you to look at them a certain way say something about them so we're going to we're going to do just the opposite of what the devil wants yes. us to do. Okay, First thing I'm going to do is I'm not going to consider them. I'm going to consider myself and Christ. And I think you kind of mentioned it because, listen, when it comes to me and Christ, the only thing I got to be made critical, got to be critical of is me. And I, I'm not going to be looking at other people's. I'm going to consider uh, Romans chapter 3, like you had read out of earlier. And remember that God said don't judge, you know, because, again, without the judges do, it's not the same thing. I'm going to consider the Pharisees. That's all they ever did. I don't want to be like a Pharisee. I want to be like Jesus. Jesus didn't uh, run around uh, criticizing everybody. Amen. And then I got the R, which is reduce yourself. Very simple. Just humble yourself. Uh, make sure you don't think more highly of yourself than you have to think. Think soberly according as God has given to every man the measure of faith. Amen. And then I like uh, the I, entreat God's grace. That means that, again, if you want God's grace, you're going to have to go to God. And the only way to go get God's grace is you got to get low, amen. You got to yeah. get under the bar, amen. Then think right, and and, and I'm thinking about that with, with the T because it's critical. So make sure that you're thinking right, and the only uh, way to think right is you're going to think about things that are true, things that are lovely, things that are pure. Most of the times when we're being critical of something, there's no truth to it whatsoever. There's no realness because remember, it's assumptions, it's all these things, it's preconceived ideas, uh, it's prejudices, but there's no truth there. So I mean, yeah. if you're thinking about things that are true, honest, good report. That's going to cause you not to be critical. And then I want to give you the I. You're going to be intentional yeah. about how you're going to battle the strategy. And here's what I'm going to go, okay? So with the C, the next C, compliment them. The enemy wanted you to criticize them. So, okay, yeah. uh, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to find something about you that I can compliment. Hey, th I'm, this, this is really good about you. I like the way you do this. I like the way you do I'm not going to criticize them. Affirmation. I'm going to give them some type of affirmation. And I'm going to try to build them up. And then the L, love them. Because if I love them like Christ loved them, I'm not going to criticize them. I'm not going to be judgmental of them because, I mean, honestly, even Jesus said, judge not yeah. lest you be judged. And with the same yeah. measure that you judge them, you shall also be judged yourself. And then he was talking about that whole time about how to love the way that he loves and not loving like everybody else loves. If you look at the text, he was talking about loving the way that he loves. And the truth is, he doesn't judge us. He was judged for us. Mm -hmm. You know, just I think that would do it just using that critical. Praise, Praise God. God. Thank you all. So the warrior battle strategy is, number one, stop judging, right? You kind of mm -hmm. all touched <laughs> all on all this, over, but David, stop. stop judging. Why? Because God says so in his word. Amen. You know, he says, judge not, it, lest ye be judged. Amen. Stop judging appearances, right? Amen, yeah. Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Amen. The Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, right. but the Lord looketh on the heart. We got to stop judging amen. amen number two examine our motives you know examine our hearts motives and conduct rather than judging others 
right? Amen. The Bible again says, Judge not, lest ye be judged. The traits that bother us and other people are often the exact habits and the traits That's good, <laughs> uh, yeah. that we dislike in ourselves, Amen. right? So examine our motives. And then number three, prayerfully consider. You know, ask God. Ask God to search our hearts, right? Yeah. Uh, Psalm 139, 23 through 24. Search me, O God. Try, uh, know my heart. Try me. Know my thoughts. Mm-hmm. All that stuff. See if there's any wicked way in me. Right. Yeah. Right. Lead me in the way everlasting. Number four is confess your sin when when the lord exposes your sin right we got to confess it amen we got to humbly confess and say god you know i messed up in this specific area the yeah. specific sin that god's pointing out confess into god and then forsake it amen. by the power of god's holy spirit amen number uh, five is remove the beam right in matthew 7 it talks about judge not that ye be not judged and it talks about how man why are you judging this person when you have a whole beam in your eye <laughs> right, exactly, exactly, <laughs> amen yeah. so we got to remove that beam in our own eyes stop judging other people stop criticizing someone else and look inside and see what that beam is just judge yourself first amen, amen yeah. <laughs> number six is humble yourself amen right, yeah there's so much pride right yeah. uh, when we're judging other people there's pride involved in that basically saying i could never do that sin right i could never do this specific thing and i think of john 8 1 through 8 right it talks about the adulterous woman right, right. Yeah, yeah and they're just literally judging this woman of her sin and so we gotta stop judging and accusing people of their sin because we all sin sin amen. is sin is in god's eyes right. god hates sin and we ought to hate sin as well so right. praise god <laughs> amen praise god and you know i love what jesus said there too because even in that while you're talking about it they they all came there with the critical spirit they were like you you know you want stone her and and jesus said you without sin cast the first stone and we talk about the beam and if you have that critical spirit and you're having that judgmental spirit and all you do is run around being critical of everybody and judging everybody and i'm gonna tell you that it that could be the beam that is in the eye of the church right now you know i mean with being judgmental and critical also could be you know the person is doing that's the beam in their eyes so i thought yeah. that was a great battle strategy as well pull that beam out get yeah, it out of your get eye it out, all right man. amen Jesus all right we got to pray yeah. we have a very little time so i'm going to start <laughs> father we come before you right now lord and we just lift up this device and we ask you to demolish it in the mighty name of jesus we pray that right now uh, that you'd help our listeners if they have a, a struggle with being critical, with being judgmental, uh, anybody in the church that's, that's struggling with it, uh, Lord, anybody uh, that is going through it, uh, I pray that, Lord, you just help them to just be made free from this judgmental and critical spirit. I ask you to help the whole church to be free from it. I pray that the church would stop trying to do your job and that we would start doing our job. Lord, I pray that you would help us not to be critical and judgmental or make assumptions about one another. I pray that you just help us to be loving, help us to keep our eyes on you, Lord, help us to humble ourselves and help us to be the Christians that you've called us to be. Help us to reach a lost and dying world with your love. In Jesus' name. I agree. Lord, I agree. Father, I pray right now that you would help remove the blinders off of your people, Lord. Anybody who's being critical and judgmental, Lord, I pray that we would completely look inward and get ourselves right with you, Lord. Compare ourselves to you. I pray that you'd help us to cleanse ourselves. Lead us to Calvary so that we'd be crucified, Please, Lord. Lord. And put all of this stuff to death, God, so that you could be resurrected in us. Because then when we do that, we will help others to look to you, Lord. Please, Uh, please, Lord, deliver your people from this stronghold. Deliver your people from being a judge when there is no judge but you, Lord. And and when we do the very same things often and and it's wrong, God. So I just pray that you'd reveal it, that you would remove it and break it away, Lord, in Jesus' name. I agree. I agree. Lord, I pray that you would forgive your people for judging and being uh, critical, Lord. Um, I pray that you would completely demolish the judgmental, critical spirit within the whole body of Christ, Mm -hmm. Lord. And I pray that you would just help us examine our motives, Lord. Help us examine our hearts and uh, remove our own beam, Lord, Mm -hmm. out of our own eyes. Mm -hmm. And I just pray, Lord, that you would completely remove this out of the body of Christ, Lord. I pray that you would empower your people to just have a caring, compassionate spirit like you, Jesus. In your mighty name, amen. Amen. Praise Praise God. God. Thank you again for tuning in to the Victorious Christian Radio Ministry, where every week we learn how to victoriously fight the good fight of faith as fierce kingdom warriors enlisted in God's mighty army.